How frogs reproduce can be super confusing. Are they hugging or just being cute? The part that confuses most people is that frogs reproduce externally. So you could say that everything happens outside the male and female. What happens is the frogs get into amplexus or this hugging position where the male is on top. Then the female releases her eggs one by one and the male fertilizes them. The newly created zygotes absorb the water around them to form a barrier of protection. Once the parents are done laying the eggs, they leave. But before all that egg laying action happens, something else brings the couple together. These are some of the calls that male frogs make to attract female frogs during the mating season. Each frog species has their own call, and with over 7,400 known frog species around the globe, there are over 7,400 unique frog calls. Pretty amazing, right? So how does this calling thing work? Male frogs are the ones that make the calls thanks to the vocal sacs on the sides of their mouth. They fill them up with air and then release their species-specific calls to attract females. Sometimes their sounds are so loud that they can be heard up to one mile away. Frogs generally call when they are ready to mate, so during the spring, the wet, or monsoon seasons. Frogs may also use other calls after it rains, when they're afraid, or to protect their territory. The funny thing is, how us humans interpret frog calls changes depending on our language. For example, English speakers say that frogs make a ribbit ribbit sound, but French speakers say that frogs make a croc croc sound. The vast majority of frogs reproduce in water, for example in ponds, marshes, bogs, fens, swamps, and temporary pools of water. But more and more of these locations are disappearing or being degraded by human activity. Without appropriate water, frogs cannot reproduce and populations decline. Luckily, there are many environmental protection projects out there helping protect the wetlands that frogs call home. These projects sometimes accept volunteer citizens to help accelerate and expand their mission to protect frogs and their natural habitats. Knowing if a frog is female or male can be difficult depending on the species. Often, male frogs are the ones that call during mating season. Male frogs may also be smaller or a different color than females. But sometimes the frogs are neither female nor male. These frogs are considered intersex. Intersex is a common occurrence in nature and frogs are no exception, from birds to fish to reptiles, rodents, and even humans. Scientists have found that certain pesticides can interfere with frog gender, making males become intersex. But there is also evidence that this is a natural occurrence as well. Male frogs may change gender to become female when there are too many males in a group and not enough females to successfully mate. Having more females in a male-dominated group can allow the frogs to successfully reproduce. Did you know that frogs can lay 2 to over 30,000 eggs per reproductive cycle? But why do frogs lay so many eggs? The main reason why frogs lay so many eggs is for survival. Frogs have hundreds of predators lurking all around them. The eggs have no defense mechanisms. And the vast majority of adult frogs do not remain with their eggs. But there are exceptions to this rule. Surprisingly, some frog species really care for their young. For example, some poison dart frogs carry their tadpoles on their backs or lay their eggs in different puddles around the rainforest and feed their tadpoles multiple times a day, remembering exactly where each puddle is. Oftentimes, frogs that stay with their young live in harsh conditions and have found unique adaptations to ensure their survival. Here's what frog eggs look like. Some people think that they hatch like chicken eggs, but they don't. Frog eggs actually go through metamorphosis to transform into tadpoles. And they live and swim in water. Tadpoles generally transform through three main steps. First, tadpoles have no feet. Then they develop their hind legs. And then their front legs. Tadpoles begin to leave the water once they have their front and hind legs. But why can't they leave the water sooner? Well, tadpoles couldn't live on land without feet, but especially they live in water because they can only breathe in water. Tadpoles have gills and slowly develop lungs so they can breathe outside of water. 
frogs go through metamorphosis when they transform from eggs to tadpoles to froglets. But what is the last stage of their life cycle? Adult frogs, of course. And at this stage, their tail has been absorbed by their bodies and the frogs can live and breathe on land. This has brought scientists to question how to classify frogs versus other animals. Are frogs reptiles, mammals, or something else? Frogs are amphibians. Amphibian means double life or two lives. Frogs, like salamanders and newts, are considered amphibians because they live part of their lives in water as eggs and tadpoles and part of their lives on land as froglets and adult frogs. Frogs are cold-blooded animals, but that doesn't mean that they have cold blood. Cold-blooded or ectothermic animals are the same temperature as their environment and can change their body temperature depending on external sources like the sun. But so are reptiles like snakes, turtles, alligators, and lizards. So what makes frogs different from them? Well, frogs can live on land and in water. Frogs do not have scaly skin or shells. Frogs breathe through their lungs, but also breathe through their skin. Frogs have bulging eyes and no tail, contrary to many reptiles. What frogs eat can be very confusing. Because what frogs eat changes depending on the life cycle stage. For example, tadpoles with no legs may eat very different things compared to tadpoles that have developed legs. Froglets and adult frogs do not eat the same foods as tadpoles with no legs. At the very first stages of their lives, tadpoles feed on plant matter. Do you know what an animal that only eats plants is called? A herbivore. Herbivores like tadpoles with no legs feed on plant matter in their environment. They may feed on algae and phytoplankton or tiny bits of plant matter in the water. Once tadpoles have developed legs, they are no longer herbivores or animals that only eat plants. They add something new to their diet. Once tadpoles start to have legs, they no longer eat only plants, but also meat. But not the meat that you eat. They eat animal matter like small bugs and zooplankton. Since tadpoles with legs eat both plant-based foods and meat-based foods, they are omnivores. Froglets and adult frogs are carnivores, meaning that once they can leave the water, they only feed on meat. But not that kind of meat. Small frogs tend to eat bugs and smaller prey whereas larger frogs can also eat small mammals and small reptiles, like birds, snakes, and lizards. Most people think frogs live in water, and some do, but what about the frogs that you find in trees, or the ones on the ground? Well, there are over 7,400 known frog species, and scientists discover more and more every year. But to keep things simple, there are three main kinds of frogs that you can find in the wild. We're gonna cover all three, but let's start with aquatic frogs. Aquatic frogs live in fresh water and have specific characteristics other frogs do not have. Aquatic frogs generally have long hind legs, webbed feet, and live in freshwater environments like marshes, bogs, and swamps. But what about these cuties? You may think toads are the ugly version of frogs, but all toads are frogs, and toads are beautiful. Toads are terrestrial frogs, meaning that they live on land. Toads have short legs, so they're not very good at jumping compared to other frogs but they are excellent at digging thanks to their spaded toes. But what about frogs that live in trees? Frogs that live in trees are generally referred to as tree frogs, but are also known as arboreal species. These types of frogs may live in, around, or near trees. 
They often have little pads or suction cups on their toes to stick to surfaces. Frogs are one of the most diverse animal species on Earth, with hundreds of varieties living in very different habitats. But as a general rule, there are three main things that frogs need to thrive in their habitat. Fresh water, food, and a safe place to lay their eggs. There are many places that can provide these necessities, and some habitats frogs enjoy the most are near calm lakes, ponds, marshes, swamps, bogs, and other types of calm freshwater wetlands. These places provide calm water for frogs to lay eggs, as well as plenty of shelter and food. But some locations do not provide these ideal conditions all year round. For example, some frogs live in places that are very cold in the winter or very hot in the summer. So how do frogs survive these harsh conditions? Frogs survive winter by hibernating. Hibernating consists in a long period of rest and often takes place for many animals during the winter. Keep in mind, many scientists prefer to use the word brumation for cold-blooded animals. So you could say that frogs brumate during winter. Frogs located in areas like the northern United States, Canada, northern Europe, and Russia brumate during winter. Aquatic frogs float in water below the ice, toads burrow underground below the frost line, and tree frogs hide under leaf litter and freeze solid during the winter. Each type of frog has a very different way of surviving the cold. But what about frogs that live in the desert? Some frogs live in very dry, arid locations, like the desert, and those frogs also have a period of rest. But instead of it being during the winter, it's during the peak of summer, when it's too hot for them to survive above ground. These frogs estivate to survive the heat. They generally burrow underground during the hot season and come back out during the wet season to reproduce. Here's a strange question you probably never thought of. Why is it okay to pet your dog? Well, dogs clearly like to be pet, but they also have a coat of fur protecting their skin, and they breathe through their lungs. What about frogs? Is it okay to pet them? Contrary to many other animals, frogs do not have anything protecting their skin, like fur, feathers, or scales. Frogs actually have extremely thin, sensitive skin, Adult frogs use their lungs to breathe, but also breathe through their skin by taking in oxygen from the water through a process called osmosis. Frogs take in oxygen from the water through their skin and expel carbon dioxide. But what do you think happens when that water is polluted? Since water quality is so important to the frog's ability to breathe and drink, a frog's skin can easily absorb toxins and pollution in the water. Frogs can be injured or killed by pesticides, road runoff, and harsh chemicals that are dumped into their environments. Water and light are important for all forms of life in ecosystems. The light from the sun helps plants grow through photosynthesis. The plants are eaten by animals, which are in turn eaten by larger animals. When these animals die, they are turned into nutrient-rich soil by decomposers and that nutrient-rich soil helps producers grow. This consists in the food chain. Here's how a food chain works. Producers capture the light from the sun through photosynthesis to grow and produce food for other animals. The animals that eat plants are consumers. These include herbivores, omnivores, and carnivores. When these animals die, they are eaten by decomposers like bacteria and fungi to produce nutrient-rich soil that helps plants grow. Frogs have many predators in their food webs that think they make a great snack. They can be found in the air, in the water, and on the ground, including snakes, lizards, birds, and small mammals. Therefore, all of these elements are affected by each other. For example, if the water is polluted, the plants can't grow, slowly killing off the rest of the life cycle or requiring them to migrate. Frogs have hundreds of predators lurking around them in the water, on the land, and in the air. 
So how do frogs defend themselves to survive in the wild? Frogs have many tactics to escape or avoid predators, like playing dead, surprising their enemies with color, or camouflaging to avoid being seen. Some frogs are poisonous and use color to show predators not to eat them, or secrete toxins through glands on their skin. Frogs may urinate to fend off predators, including humans. When you find a frog in your backyard or a local pond, you may naturally wonder what species it is. But with over 7,400 known frog species around the globe, and with more and more frogs being discovered every month, it can be hard to know which kind of species you found. Thankfully, there are easy questions that you can ask to find out what kind of frog you found. First, where are you located? Your country or location will help determine the kind of frog that you found. Next, where did you find the frog? In a body of water, in a tree, or on land? Then look at the traits of the frog. For example, the size, color, skin texture, and patterns. Answering all of these questions will really help you narrow down the type of frog that you found. For example, here we have a large green aquatic frog that is found in North America. It has smooth skin and very few patterns. It's an American bullfrog. You can use the tables on our site to identify the frog that you found based on these questions. So many people hate this toad species. Why, you ask? Because it has wrecked havoc on the ecosystems where it lives. It reproduces very quickly, laying up to 30,000 eggs twice per year. It is super toxic, killing off any predator that attempts to eat it. And it eats so much wildlife from snakes to baby alligators, birds, bats, and more. But how did this happen? How did this cute little toad become such a big nuisance? It's because of humans. Humans brought cane toads from South America to many places around the globe in the 1930s as a natural way to kill cane beetles. But cane toads don't only eat beetles, they thrived where they were introduced and proliferated quickly becoming a huge problem to pets, humans, and local native wildlife. People hate cane toads, but it's our own fault that they are where they are today. Frogs and toads represent good luck, good fortune, and prosperity in many cultures around the world, from Asia to South America to ancient Egypt and within many Native American tribes. So why do frogs have such a bad reputation? Why are there so many people afraid of frogs or that hate them? Well, like we saw previously, cane toads are an invasive species, and they're giving all other toad species a bad reputation. But the main reason frogs have such a bad rep is because of Christianity. Many years ago, in order to grow its dominance, Christianity ridiculed other cultural beliefs that saw frogs in a positive light. Frogs were portrayed as demons responsible for the plague, and these beliefs are still around today. But frogs are super important for the health of our ecosystems and for our own health. They play a key part in the food chain, prevent disease transmission by feeding on potential carriers, and keep our waterways clean. Frogs offer potential advancements in the medical field, with around 10% of Nobel Prizes in physiology and medicine resulting from frog-based research. Without frogs, we lose access to healthy ecosystems, and human health advancements. Frogs also act as bioindicators for researchers, meaning that frogs can help us understand the health of a natural ecosystem. So what does it mean that frogs are bioindicators? Well, humans can gain insight into an environment's overall condition by studying frogs, providing time for proactive measures or adaptations. For example, if the frogs are dying, this will impact the entire food chain and ecosystem. So we can study the water quality and look for pollution or diseases that could be killing the frogs and take measures to help the ecosystem thrive again before it's too late. When measures aren't taken to improve a degrading ecosystem, frogs can become endangered and die off. Some of the main reasons ecosystems where frogs live are at risk include deforestation, urbanization, roads dividing migration areas, pollution, and climate change. For example, the western chorus frog thrived along the St. Lawrence River in Quebec. 
but due to urbanization along this area, this frog is now listed as vulnerable to extinction in Quebec and is an endangered species in many other parts of Canada. The good thing is that there are associations, scientists, biologists, and concerned citizens who have been involved in protecting their natural ecosystems and have been working to revive the populations. You can help with frog conservation in many ways. You can start in your backyard by making it frog friendly, for example with a frog pond or a hibernaculum for toads. Do not use pesticides in your garden. Keep your pets away and cover your pool when it's not in use. Avoid touching frogs or only pick them up when it's necessary and be sure to wear gloves. Participate in a local frog conservation effort or citizen science project. You've probably heard that toads can give you warts or that kissing a frog will make it into a prince. Let's see if these are true. Here are some common things people believe about frogs. Pause the video and decide which ones are facts or myths. Okay, are you ready? Here are the answers. Toads cannot give you warts. Kissing a frog will not transform it into a prince, and that can actually be pretty dangerous since frogs can carry viral and bacterial diseases on their skin, like salmonella. And pink frogs do not exist. I guess it was a bit of a trick question because none of these are true. You may have seen these kinds of frog images on the internet, but do they really exist? Let's find out by playing a game. One of these frogs does not exist. Is it the tomato frog? the rainbow frog, or the blue poison dart frog. One of these are also fake. Is it the red-eyed tree frog, the strawberry poison dart frog, or the pink poison dart frog? Here are the answers. Rainbow and pink frogs do not exist. It's really important to know because it's so easy to make fake images these days. Learn more about frogs in the playlist above and be sure to head over to toadsandfrogs.com teachers if you're an educator.